Marab Davishvili. I believe that's how you say the man's last name. If it isn't, once again, my apologies. These names are not that easy to say. But um, he is set to face Piotr Jan tomorrow. And uh, if there's any fighter that could beat Piotr Jan, it is somebody like this. Now, of course, I have a reason for saying that. You know, we've seen Jan, even though he's really well-rounded, we've seen him struggle with grappling in the past, right? I mean, we saw him lose to Aljamain Sterling. Whether you think he lost that fight or not, it's completely up to you. But in the fight, we saw him have some issues with Aljamain Sterling's grappling. It is also true that Aljamain Sterling is a different type of grappler to someone like Mirab. Their body type is different. Their leverage is different. The approach to fighting in, in general is just wildly different, right? You could say that Aljamain Sterling is a sort of expert when it comes to taking and holding the back in the world of MMA. And that is not really something that we've come to see from, from Mirab. But he's still a grappler. I'm pretty sure he understands that when he fights Piotr Jan, he, Jan is not a guy that he's going to just stand in front of or think he's going to be able to outstrike. He will not be able to outstrike Piotr Jan. It is very clear that he is going to try to implement a similar style to the one that he implemented against Jose Aldo. And Aldo is not an easy man to outgrapple. You know what I mean? So um, this is a very winnable fight for the man. Um, Piotr Jan, I'm pretty sure, is going to be coming back with some serious vengeance. Not against uh, Marab because they haven't fought before. But like just with the way things have gone in his career, I'm pretty sure he's going to have a different sort of, sort of motivation for this one. I'm sure he wants to get back to that title. So overall, I, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting fight. And, dude, the, the whole entire card is actually not bad at all. It really isn't. So, um, this one's going to be for my Night Owls. I was thinking about uploading this video a little bit earlier, but, you know, figured I'm just going to uh, just wait until around this time to upload it. So, um, I've actually already recorded the uh, the Fighter Showcase. I'm just doing the, the little intro right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and play the showcase for you guys and... Uh, Enjoy. I really tried to kind of mimic Marab in this one, so there will be some grappling. Hope you guys don't mind. But yeah, enjoy the fight. All righty, boys. Here we go. Here we go. Marab. Probably just going to do an intro later. <laughs> this weight, these weight classes kind of got sprung on me a little bit. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, we didn't touch. I'm going to try my very best to uh, implement a... A grappling style in, in this fight. Oh my god, right away, too. He caught me with that knee because I was I was leaning back. Right, this dude is reckless as all heck. Yeah, he caught me with that knee because I was leaning back and Dude. What's this man's name? Kid on Corona. Okay, I need to stop. I need to stop with, with pulling back. I'm thinking he's going to double up on the elbow, so I'm trying to pull the elbow. Yeah, this man is... Dude, I, I, I got to get this man to the ground. I got to get this dude to the ground. He's doing a lot of erratic shit right now. Yeah, he's doing a lot of erratic stuff right now. I need to be very careful with this man. There we go. No. Americana. Let's go for it right away. Right away. No, no time wasting. Oh, he's really trying not to not to overdo it with the bar. Oh, it's gonna be close. Bro, that makes no sense, but I, I did it anyways. I think we'll get it. We got it. We got it. That, uh, that was a quick one, dude. <laughs> that was a quick one. Took that man down right away. Got him into crucifix. And submitted him with, hands down, my favorite submission in, in UFC 4, the Americana. I love, love this submission. I really, really do. We got him, man. We got him. We got him. Very clean. Very. It, ma it makes no sense letting go to try to hit him. And then going back to the sub. Makes no sense, but, you know. That's UFC 4 for you. <laughs> that is UFC 4 for you. Let's move on, boys. 
Yes, I am. Oh, Aldo. I will uppercut you in the head. Right away, I can tell you the style my opponent is using right now is it's one of the easier styles to deal with in the game because he is he is moving back, planting, and then ripping under the assumption that I'm still going to be there. You, you don't want to fight like that. You don't want to fight like that. I would say, you know, I've been trying to do this a little bit. Like, I see a player and I try to, like, assign a belt level to them in the game just because it's fun. I would say this is a purple belt in, in UFC 4. Boom. Uh, you know, like a, like a hobbyist purple belt, I'd say. He's up. Because he's, he's making, like, he's making one of the earliest mistakes you make in the game where it's you know back up back up then plant and rip but you do that under the assumption that your opponent is is still going to stand in front of you and a style like that is easily defeated by with footsies so like you know it's back you enter the pocket you back out you enter you back out and you can just make him whiff over and over i mean look at his stamina this man is going to be very very gassed in in round two or so like he's he's gonna gas himself out bad and i'm not gonna ha i'm i won't have to do too much there we go probably not gonna get it i don't i don't think i had enough advantage to go for it chain that see what happens step over step over go for the on bar He'll be fine. I shouldn't have chained it because now he's going to reverse position. <laughs> there we go. So I control. I got to move. What are we doing? There we go. He's going to go right. I knew it. He's going to throw a few shots because why not? And then I'm going to reverse him into side control. Yep. Deny that. Deny that. And I'm not going to go for it again. Not right now. Let's just do a bit of damage. He got it. I keep forgetting about that sometimes. Let's move. Don't do it again. Good. Good. Very good. <laughs> you see what he's doing? It's like back up, back up, plant, and then just one, two, three. Back up, plant, one, two, three. See that? It becomes very easy to read. It really does. It becomes very, very easy to predict what he will do. A style like this, if I had someone with, say, front kicks, uh, that's when I start firing off those front kicks to the head. I just I stay in the I stay at kicking range and just hit him with front kicks over and over again, and we get him out of there. Now look at his stamina. In my opinion, if you're using Jose Aldo. Even though Aldo's stamina is not exactly the best, it still should not be this low in round number two. If your stamina is this low with Jose Aldo in round number two, you are doing something terribly wrong. Yeah. See how he's just easily making them whiff? Very easy. Now we got to be careful with the double elbows. We got to be careful with that. Yeah, we got to be careful with the double elbows. I'm going to start slowly working in clinch, the clinch in there. Of course, we're looking for shots on exit. See how he handles them. Nice. Got him again. Too eager.
Almost. If, also, if I can give you guys some, some advice. If you're fighting somebody and you get put in the clinch, don't be too in a hurry to, like, exit the clinch. Unless you're also prepared to try to pull the shot that's going to come after it. A lot of times, the best thing to do... Like, see, how, see what I'm doing right here? I'm not rushing to exit. There we go. I'm like, I'm standing in the clinch, and I'm looking to punch him as well. Um, you can fire off damage of your own. You don't want to immediately try to back out. Because that's when, like right here, see how he's backing out, and I just caught him with that clean shot? Yeah. You get caught in a clinch like that, stay in there, block, and then just look to punch your opponent. And then slowly exit. Can I dump him? Oh, he wants to stay there. Oh, we don't get this often. See, I, I, I wish this position was more like fighting from the clinch here. I wish this was more of a thing in the game. It needs to be more fleshed out. Look at how badly this man is bleeding. And look at his stamina as well. Like how, how low it is. Look at how low his stamina is. That's not, it's not good, man. It is not good. Got him. Mm-hmm. Rocked again. Oh ho. There we go. He's doing a better job here. And then this position, this is this is actually this is actually really fun when you want to see see that right here is a battle of the inside bicep if you have inside bicep, like he's doing a good job of fighting it look at that look at that look at oh come on man ah uh, i i uh, i love when they add little things like that got him yeah that should be it yes Man, I love when they add little things like that. Like, that is straight up hand fighting. You know, we need more hand fighting in the game. We need more hand fighting. With the grappling, even with striking. Even with striking. Especially in the clinch. In the clinch, a vast majority of clinching is hand fighting. A vast majority of pummeling, hand fighting, controlling the wrist, kazushi. It's, it needs to be more fleshed out. It really does. Um, but yeah, when you get someone that wants to fight it, you know, in the in the clinch against the cage for a little bit, it is fun, fun times, honestly. Uh, let's do one more, one more fight. Ready? Are you ready? Let's get it. <laughs> it's gonna be that kind of fight it's gonna be that yeah i i don't want him i don't want him to get easy takedowns on me like that anymore so we're gonna get back up and then we're gonna switch stances and then like i don't mind grappling but i don't i don't want him taking me down like that yeah dude yeah no 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 usually i i don't usually i don't play this stance switching game but we're gonna play it today sir we're gonna play it today so that Osotogari trip that he just got me with, keep in mind, it's not going to work if you and your opponent are in opposite stances, okay? So if he's southpaw and you're orthodox, it won't work. So like right here, my opponent is in a conventional stance, orthodox, and I am southpaw. He's not going to be able to perform the Osotogari on me. I don't know if he knows that. I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain he does. Ah, sneaky, sneaky. 
No, no. No, 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 no. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Yeah. Denied it, but okay. I can already tell this man does not know how to deal with pressure. I can already tell. No. No. When you have a... He, he's, he's fighting back. But for who he's using, right? He's using, he's using Pure Dion. I don't think he should, he should be as defensive as he's being right now. I don't, I don't think so. He's using Yan. Like I would not be that defensive. If I'm using Pure Dion and you're using Marab, Dav Davilish Vili, and you're trying to like bully me, it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Pure Dion is just too equipped. To deal with a fight like this. I mean, Pyotrion is built for a fight like this. He's built for combat. Like, 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 straight up warfare in UFC 4. He's, he's one of the best characters to have for a fight like this. And so the fact that my opponent is not confident and he's backing up and he's, you know, moving his head too much and really trying to avoid a firefight, that tells me that he's not comfortable here, right? Like, I'll give you guys an example. There's a UFC 4 player, Crooks. Um, really, really good pressure fighter. You know, whether it's Crooks, Swizz, Romero, even Pry. Even Pry. Like, if they had, if they had um, Piotr Jan, you're not just going to freaking walk them down like that. It's not going to work. <laughs> you're most likely going to get shredded if you try. So... You see, he's, yeah, he's just not, he's nowhere near active enough for me to respect whatever he's doing. He's too defensive. Come on. Homeboy. No. You got to get a rock, sir. And he stops. That's <laughs> he should not have stopped. You'll also notice I am whiffing way less than he is. Which is also what's affecting the stamina. I mean, look at how much stamina loss. Nice, nice, nice. Mark again. It's only a matter of time. gunfight it is a gunfight wouldn't it be dope if Mirab and Pyotrion ends up like this where they just freaking duke it out in the middle that'd be great 
But it's going to be unlikely. I think Marab is going to really look to pin this man against the cage for five rounds. It is a five round fight. He will probably fight very, very safe. He's not going to strike too much with Jan. This fight's over. He's not going to strike with Jan. He's going to look to drag him to the ground. If he can't, he's probably just going to try to pin him against the cage for, for all five rounds. And, uh, you know, no respect. Yeah, no respect to you either, little bitch. Double thanks. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, so, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, um, hopefully Jan won't let him <laughs> make it a, a dull fight, you know. Hopefully, hopefully not. Can you tell I'm still a little bit salty about what he did to Jose Aldo? Because, like, that wasn't cool, man. <laughs> that wasn't cool, bro. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, then again, anybody that beats... Anytime... A Anytime Aldo gets beat, I, I get salty because I'm a huge Aldo fan. Even when it's a fighter that I like, you know, was a, I was also a fan of Connor when he when he beat Aldo, and that wasn't fun either. You know, it wasn't fun. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Always leave a like on it. It helps out. You guys are amazing, and I'll see you guys later. As always, stay safe. Peace out. Have a good one.